So let's start with some of those data. I mean, we got some really robust data we talked about this week, but it's, not, it's just the latest and quite a few uh, series of data that are pretty encouraging about the economy. Yeah, so the real story in markets has been the month of November, obviously, and, and the market's digesting really four pieces of important data. The first one, of course, inflation. Inflation continues to go down, but we see disinflation broadening. We see it in goods, we see it in services, and we see it in big-ticket items like shelter and automobiles. So that's the first thing, inflation. Second thing, labor market, softening a bit. That's a good sign for lower inflation as well. We see um, the unemployment rate drifting up a bit, 3.9%, still very low historically. Unemployment claims drifting up a bit. Um, and then the real news, I think, was the following. The bond market digesting that huge move in 10-year Treasury rates in the month of November, 60 basis points down from a 488 uh, down 60 to 428. That's an enormous move in financing costs, not just for the federal government, of course, but for anyone who borrows, consumers with mortgages and car loans, um, local governments, companies. Um, very big news. And then the last thing that the market was digesting is after three quarters in a row of negative earnings growth in the S&P 500, we actually had positive earnings this quarter. 4% growth, 80% of companies beating expectations. So the market digested all of that, and you said it. We had a rally at everything. So I want to say I find this a little humbling, because if you go back to the end of 2022, I'm not sure we would have predicted any of this. So why did so many of us get this so wrong? So, David, as you know, history has taught us that when you have inflation in the economy and you have the Federal Reserve raising interest rates to slow the economy, 90% of the time you end up in a recession. So here we are, we're 20 months in to a very fast and very aggressive Fed hiking cycle and there's no recession in sight. Why is that? I think many people underappreciated the change in two pillars of the economy, consumers and large companies. Consumers, of course, 70% of the economy. The consumer balance sheet has changed dramatically since the financial crisis. First, consumers are twice as wealthy. 20% wealthier just since the beginning of this decade, thanks to stock markets and real estate appreciation. Second of all, um, they've been borrowing less. The financial crisis was a terrible crisis for the consumer. They've been borrowing much more prudently. You see, you know, 10% or so of their disposable income now going uh, to borrowing costs. That was close to 15% before the financial crisis. But the most important thing when you look at consumer balance sheets is, is two-thirds of consumer borrowing is their mortgage. Mm. Those mortgages have been refinanced at very low rates. They're going to stay that way for a while. Corporate America, sort of the same thing. Big companies, before the crisis, they would borrow in short-term markets, commercial paper. Those rates are very high now. Companies aren't doing that. Instead, they did what consumers did, and they took advantage of low rates in 2020 and 2021, the S&P 500, taking um, refinancing debt, issuing new debt at low rates and terming it four years, five years, six years, ten years. Um, and so that, that has made both the consumer and large companies less sensitive to interest rate increases. So what does this tell you at BNY Mellon about next year? What is your outlook for next year? Yeah, so our outlook for next year, we, we would call it a healthy slowdown. We've obviously had a very fast start to this decade mm -hmm. with lots of um, big and important events. And we look at uh, next year as you know, possibly the first sort of more normal year that we're going to see in the market. We think that inflation will continue to drift down, but perhaps not as rapidly as it has um, you know, in, the last, uh, in the last year. We think that the Fed will probably lower rates next year. We're expecting more like two rate cuts, however. The market is expecting four. We hope the market is right, because lower rates are good for everybody, but we're not sure about that. Um, we think that um, large companies will continue to have earnings growth. We think maybe 8% or so next year. The market thinks 12. That would be great if the market is right. We're a little more um, conservative. And so we see a positive outlook for equity markets, you know, call it 6 to 8% next year here in U.S. large cap. Um, we see a positive outlook for bond markets because you have yield, plus if you have rate cuts, you have appreciation. Yeah. Um, and we wouldn't be surprised, actually, if people had higher returns on their bonds than they did on their stocks next year. So, Catherine, one last question. You talk about equity markets and bond markets. I suspect you're talking about public markets. Correct. What about private markets? Because that's all the news these days. So much money is going to private equity, private credit. So you, you, you are referencing a real change in market structure over you know, the last 20, 30 years, right? If we think about public stock markets over you know, the last 20, 30 years, there were you know, 
8,000 public companies back then. Now there are 4,000. Mm -hmm. You look at the private equity world, there are 16,000 companies that are owned by private equity firms and funds. So market structure has changed. And individual investors should invest like institutions, right? Mm -hmm. We're all responsible for our financial futures. We're investing with long-term time horizons. And you see companies in those private market years, you know, they tend to be smaller, they tend to grow faster. You want to get access to that. Um, and you need, and you know, another theme about markets is they've become more complicated. You need to work with an advisor to do that. Son of a gun. Do you have some of those? We have some of those. <laughs> but, we have some of those. Yes, we it's do. It's a complicated world out there. You it is a complicated world out there. You do. Yeah, exactly. We do.